What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to be looking at the communication and more precisely the job change procedures for a Cognex 7000 series camera. So this camera has been featured in one of my Cognex classes and has been also uh, communicated with in the RS Logix 5000 class. But uh, there has been a question which is essentially how to perform a job change, which is essentially how to change the configurations of the camera based on different products that it's seeing while it is operating on the process. And the reason why you care about this is because you might be working with a process which uh, changes products. And so what's called a changeover essentially brings different parameters or a different product to the line. This could mean a different barcode, this could mean a different color, or this could mean a whole other product altogether on a manufacturing line. So what that essentially means for our camera is that you need to load a different file with the settings and uh, a job for that particular process or product and therefore it's very important to understand how to change that uh, while your software is still operational and essentially you can send signals based on an operator push button, you can send those signals based on a trigger that you get from uh, your database for example. So without any further delay, let's get right into the programming and I'm going to be showing you exactly how to get that done. Alright, so there's going to be a couple of things we want to check before we get into the programming portion of this tutorial. So the first one being is that we have full access to the camera so that we can see the job changes. And as you can see, I'm logged into the camera that I've used for many of my previous tutorials. So this is uh, a camera which is labeled as Vlad's camera. It is also online. As you can see, we are connected by the label down here as well as by the symbol over here. And as you might have noticed the flicker, it is trying to execute the job without any success because it is essentially pointing nowhere. Um, if I pick up the camera and I just show you that uh, it is in fact taking pictures as you can see of the screen right now. I'm going to just put that down behind me as our main focus is not going to be to get the camera to work. That being said, the other thing that you want to notice is I have this Inside Files pane. I can close this and then open it by clicking on View and selecting Inside Files. Inside of here, you will see all the jobs that are loaded onto the camera at this point. And the three jobs that we're mostly interested in are going to be called barcode read that job, first job test and Vlad's job that job. And so these three jobs are just arbitrary uh, programs that I've created for uh, one of the tutorials or just tests. And uh, the goal, like I said, in this tutorial is going to be to switch between these jobs because it is a key component of uh, just a good changeover manufacturing processes. So in order to uh, create a PLC program, which is going to perform that function, I've set up this separate routine for the Cognex job change. I do have a couple of other things within this PLC, but we're going to be primarily focused on this. Uh, a couple of notes on this program as well as I have a camera which is set up through this IP address 192.168.1.15. As you can see that yellow uh, status symbol went away because the camera is connected to the same network as the PLC. Therefore, it is recognized by the program and it is communicating as expected. The PLC, in case you're wondering, it's still the 1769L24ER QB1B processor and it is running on uh, Studio version 30. So looking at the program, uh, it's not very extensive, but it is uh, very important to understand the functionality. So in the first rung or rung zero, you will notice that I have a very, very crude um, way to change the different jobs. So like I said, there's going to be three different jobs. Therefore, I have three different bits to select which job we're going to use. So to see which job is selected for which index, we can right click this job name and then we can go into monitor. This will display the different strings. So essentially there's going to be a string name for each job. So job zero uh, is going to be Vlad's job. Then one is going to be first job test and two is going to be the barcode read. So we're going to be toggling between the three uh, of those jobs. I'm going to just tab back to the same routine. And as you can see here, the job index indicates which job we're going to put into the camera next. And if I select, for example, Remember, this is going to be Vlad's job and to go back to the camera really quick, I will do I will point out that we're currently running barcode read that job, which is specified up here. And if we toggle the routine, let's go back to the routine on this job trigger. If I control T, which triggers to a high and then 
unselected once again. We go back to the camera and as you can see now it's running Vlad's job. So it is essentially doing what it's supposed to do. Let's look at the program a little bit more closely. We're going to also select the second job to be installed. But uh, here's the main rung which you need to understand in order to um, trigger between different jobs. So the trigger essentially just goes uh, to set off a bit to a high whenever you want to select a different job. And immediately this bit will toggle what's called a forced offline bit. So in order for the camera to be able to change jobs, it needs to be offline. And remember from my previous videos, the online state essentially allows the camera to process images as it normally would in production. In order for it to take any changes into effect, it does need to be offline. Line. So we're forcing the camera to be offline. Once the camera is not online, so this is an XIO instruction with uh, which you, you're probably all familiar with at this point, but when it's not online, you need to perform this branch. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to shove in the length of the job name. So the camera takes the length of the job name in order to know exactly how many bytes of data you're going to put in as far as the name goes. So the previous name was 12, <clears throat> 12 uh, bytes long. And in this case, the second job name is going to be 16. And this is going to be uh, put into the, or this integer is going to be put in into the first two bytes of the packet that we're going to send to the camera in order to perform the job change. The next instruction we have is the copy instruction. So the copy instruction essentially copies one to one a piece of data, but it also takes a specified length, which limits it from overflowing uh, our bytes. So in this case, the job name at the index that data zero. So starting from byte zero in this case is going to be copied into job data starting at byte two, and then is going to be copying 30 bytes of in information. And essentially what this does is it slightly shifts because remember that the first two bytes of data are going to be occupied by the length and then the next 30 bytes are going to be occupied by the name of the job. And uh, that's just how that's just how the Cognex uh, manual specifies it. So you do need to pay attention to uh, your data. And essentially here in the job name, you can create as many strings as you'd like, you just have to put them in that array. And you can switch right above uh, through this method or any other way. You know, if you have a selection on your HMI, then maybe your HMI triggers which job you're going going to go to. Anyways, uh, the next important instruction that we need to look at is the message instruction. So the message instruction, I've actually copied a lot of the parameters from the documentation of uh, Cognex. And they describe that it needs to be a uh, SIP generic, it needs to be set attribute signal. Uh, it's also going to ch uh, take the job data. So remember, this is the packet that we've created to first bytes of which are going to be the length of the job name and then the the other 30 bytes are going to be the job name. So therefore the full length is going to be 32 bytes, which is also specified in the job data length. In terms of class 78 and instance one attribute 14, this is straight from the documentation of Cognex, they give you all those values the way they should be set up. Now in the communication, the way you do this is essentially you need to browse to the camera. And as you can see, the camera is just at the immediate location in our Ethernet network. Of course, if you're jumping through a few maybe switches, if you're jumping through the back plane, then you still need to find your camera and make sure that the pointer for the path is in the right uh, direction. And a tag is just the set job. So that's just a generic message control instruction, which is going to be specified for this purpose. We're going to hit OK. And uh, I put an encounter here just to see how many job changes actually do get performed because I did get an error at first. In any case, if we scroll back up, as you can see, we have job one selected. As soon as we trigger this change and we untrigger it, we will notice that the camera once again has gone to the next job, which is going to be the first job test. And there's a couple of more things that you can do. So if you um, if you've noticed that these tags that I've been using have a specific name, if you go back to your structure on when you put in your uh, your camera, essentially, you do get quite a few other bits of data. So you can look at 
things like job load complete, job load failed, job loading. So this is something that uh, you can inspect as well on top of uh, the job change to make sure that everything has gone smoothly and uh, performed essentially as expected. You can put in a routine where you send uh, the camera to go to a specific job and then if it fails then you try again and maybe you have that you know retry five different times and then it completely falls out in your line because essentially it hasn't loaded the new job for whatever reason this could be latency this could be poor tag structure or any other uh, issues on your line whatsoever and maybe if you just don't detect that the job is trying to load at all then maybe you have a communication problem between your PLC and the camera so there's just a lot of different things that you can do before you um, even move forward with the um, with this routine and kind of put this on your line so definitely a lot of room for improvement hopefully you guys understood the uh, basic concepts and if you have any questions make sure to post them down below or on the solusplc.com forums thank you for watching bye thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye